All right, so I got most of the parking lot laid out here with plaster. And then I did a rough outline of the access road running behind the plant. And then the other area of the parking lot that kind of dead ends out here. And then I'll eventually maybe transition to a gravel lot possibly. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. That only took about 20 minutes to lay out. I just used this stuff here. It's what I use for my crossings and everything else. Uh, it works well, it really holds up too. So I laid it out super thin. And then once I was happy with the positioning, I just I pretty much took a piece of styrene like this and I just leveled everything out with a couple passes. You can see there's a few areas I touched up that aren't perfect, but what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna take a uh, power sander and I'll just level all this out and then when it comes to fine tuning and touch up I'll do all that with a uh, hand uh, 3M sanding sponge like this guy here uh, only a little bit less coarse I think this is a 400 grit or something I got like 2000 1000 grit stuff like that so I'll be using that to just very finally go in there and do that you can see I built the plaster line up to the rough area of where the structure will be uh, when it comes down to it and all this is dry and I get everything sanded I'll just come in with an exacto and I'll use a straight edge to just cut out the rest of the plaster where I don't need the road to be to clean that up and that'll take care of all this so uh, that's a big portion of progress but I'm really happy I got that laid in that's a big step uh, so obviously all this will get sanded all this will get painted I'm not going to show all that process because there's about a trillion videos of people laying in roads and crossings and everything else but this is just a basic parking lot uh, I'm still trying to think if I want to have a fence around this whole thing um, possibly I'm gonna put some sewers in here and other little details like that so that'll all be fun uh, but all in time so basically this is how the structure is gonna sit you'll notice that uh, it actually fits in place relatively okay it's not bad um, but we are going to have to fine-tune it here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out the position of the structure with a mechanical pencil so I can get in there nice and close. I'm going to trace it out and then I'm going to take a straight edge and cut out the pattern and chisel away some of this plaster material. That way it'll fit even better into these little corners, especially in this area here. So. What I've done now is, after I got the basic outline cut out, I then started sanding all this with a very coarse grit sanding block like this by 3M. Uh, and it did a nice job blending out the pavement. What I'm going to do now is just continue to kind of sand these areas down, especially high points. And I'm just going to look out for potholes or things like that. Some of them I can sand out and others I'm going to intentionally leave in to make it look like maybe the concrete's a little bit more aged. But as you can see, there's some low and high spots here that I need to work out. And then I'm going to bring the vacuum out here to obviously clean up this mess. Since I was doing a little bit of messier work, I decided to go ahead and break up this chunk of ballast that was kind of spongy. That way I can repair this. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the vacuum and sweep all this up and we'll actually take a look at how the road looks. And then we can actually start paint prepping this. So moving along with repairs, I was able to very carefully disguise the track transition underneath the ballast with some strips of uh, paper and then glued everything in place nicely. This will be really helpful uh, to cover that up in the long run. Now, if I were to take this layout apart in the future, all I would have to do is just take a Dremel and saw through the ballast and the track, and I'd be able to just disconnect that just fine. Um, but since this is all together right now, like I said, we just needed to kind of hide that transition. Uh, there's another little spot right here where I used to have some feeders and I relocated those. Uh, this section here was replaced uh, last year, and so I got a uh, actually fill these in with some compound and then just mask them in with some ballast. Uh, here you can see I've already started re-ballasting the new area. I've glued this patch in place to really make sure that it's nice and solid before I move on to the final top layer of ballast here. I've touched up some other spots and as you can see we very nicely started to repair this area so it's starting to look nice again. Um, obviously we're going to have to repaint the switches because we've glued these down uh, and mess with this so much uh, a lot of the paint has actually come off the rail So I'm gonna have to repaint the switches and blend them back in now over here I've actually been able to figure out where I want to put in my signal bridge because if you recall I said that I want to have this signal bridge positioned over these tracks So I've actually been able to figure that out and I've glued down some styrene bases and then joined them in with some fresh ballast uh, In the scene here. I've also put in one of my first switch motors for the motor switch here 
And here you can also see where I've taken some putty and uh, covered up some old uh, track holes uh, for the wiring. Also down there, so I've been able to actually get quite a bit done tonight. I've also done some repairs to my roadway here, and as you can see, we now have the structure uh, firmly in place exactly where I want it. Uh, it's not permanently in place, it's just there, so I know what else I'll have to repair. Uh, as you can see, we'll have to get the compound directly up to the structure once it's actually put in place, and then we're going to have to repair this little seam, or rather disguise it. Uh, and then I've also made some repairs to this roadway over here as well. So we're making some good progress now, all in one night in about two hours. So I'm really happy with that. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually start making a little alley while I'm gluing ballast down. I'm going to put a little alley for the maintenance access way through here. And it's just going to kind of stop or sort of dead end back into this little area here is I think how I want to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on that next. So I'm going to start laying in an alleyway through here and what I'm going to do is actually take and I'm going to just kind of blend this in with the existing scenery a little bit by doing this. I'm just going to kind of take it and I'm just going to run it right along the main line there just like this. Kind of fill this that area there, a little bit too. Let's see, I'm just going to lay in the, the rock real carefully here. I'm just going to blend all this in, just like this. Alright, so there's what I pretty much got. You can see it runs all the way down here to where it'll pretty much dead end. And then there'll probably be a relay cabinet right in here. I might extend the ballast out a little bit more, possibly, do this turnout. And then obviously all this will be grass. Uh, this little divide here that I started working in is going to have some static grass. A little bit of static grass, probably some railroad ties and stuff like that. Uh, typical of kind of what you see. Uh, I was inspired to do it this way because this is similar to how they made the alley runner over near the railroad track. It literally just butts up right against the ballast of the tracks just like this and then you just have some weeds kind of growing in between the two. Uh, so that's how I decided to do it here and I think the transition into the other scene there looks pretty good. It'll look better once it's all actually fully scenic uh, in this area where the locomotives are. I'll have to put in grass and things like that some other details, uh, telephone poles, possibly a substation, and of course I gotta put silos over here too, but that's part of the structure section. So we've gotten a lot done tonight. I'm gonna go ahead and call tonight because it's pretty late. Uh, I'll come back tomorrow, but uh, right now I'm gonna just let this ballast dry here, and then tomorrow I'll be able to do the finishing ballast uh, to fill in that scene bef uh, between the, the tracks of the, the switches there. And then I'll be able to paint the base's concrete color uh, and then also figure out where I want to put in some other little details. So we're doing pretty good Okay, so it's the next day and everything's set up pretty well. I've went ahead and added some more ballast to some spots Since this is dried up really nice It's nice and solid now uh, Patched up some areas on the main line. Our little area is now prepped for the signal bridge and our parking lot is ready to be painted now You're gonna see this little gouge in the corner here what I ended up deciding to do was model a little drainage ditch that runs alongside the tracks here. It's just a little area where I can collect some water, for example. So what I've done is I carved it out with an X-Acto blade and I used a putty knife to kind of peel the foam back. And then I just used some plaster to go in there and fill this in a little bit. I'll just go in with some sandpaper once this dries tomorrow and I'll just sand it down a little bit. And of course I think this drainage ditch uh, inevitably will probably wrap around a little bit and probably wind up somewhere around this curve too. Uh, so it'll be a great little detail if we can add some uh, other vegetation and stuff like that uh, running along this ditch. And of course we'll be able to blend our ballast in and things like that, so that should be actually quite a lot of fun. So just another little detail thing I decided to add last minute and I'm already liking it. So what we're going to do now is paint the track, or not the track, but the roadway. I'm happy with the shape of it and where it needs to be, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, start painting this. Uh, it's not going to be a perfect paint job, I'm just going to do the majority of the road. Uh, areas like this I'm going to have to fix and disguise cleverly. 
<laughs> so what I'm going to do is uh, I'll just paint over all that and then I'll just go back and blend all that together later on and fix it. I won't need to really show the process. I'm just going to be hand painting this with some rainy day gray. And I got a large brush here that I'm going to be applying it to. And here's our concrete now painted. Of course it'll get weathered up later, but you can see it's a good base for what we need. And of course, uh, once this all dries, it'll be a much lighter color. All I did was I used a large brush and I just dry brushed the paint out and just kept working it in over different spots, uh, into potholes and things like that, and then just feathered it out over the edge a little bit. And that did a fantastic job of uh, mulling some of that aged concrete, but of course, once this is all done, this will look fantastic because we'll do some weathering effects and things like that later, but all that's going to have to wait until all the surrounding scenery is finished, like uh, the drainage ditch and things like that. We're not going to do much else with this road until all this surrounding scenery is finished, and then we'll be able to blend this in, and then we can start weathering it. That's going to be the final touches, basically, uh, but I'm really happy with how that's turned out. This all dried up pretty nicely overnight. I'm pretty happy with the, the way it shaved out. It's just a nice little man-made trench kind of drainage system. Uh, similar to what you'd see them put in these industrial areas to let water overflow and things like that just naturally drain out. What I'm going to do now is actually start painting it. And I've brought some acrylic paints out here to work on this scene. What I'm going to be using is a little bit of black, a little bit of brown. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to start painting all this with this color. And the idea here is just to give us a nice flat, darker earth tone that we can kind of work with a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of fan it out as we get towards the top. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of ballast that's gonna be coming down in here too. And it's gonna be uh, sort of settling at the bottom, but I also wanna have maybe some little puddles and things like that. So I'm gonna basically be mixing in a lot of different elements uh, to this. But you can see how I'm just painting it in like this with a, a natural dark muddy soil color, uh, preferably, because normally where you see the water erosion, it's gonna be a darker earth tone. So I don't want it this tan color like what's up here on the main portion of the module. So I'm just using this darker color and like I said, I'm just gonna blend it out a little bit as I get towards the top, make it look a little dirty, maybe look a little bit more muddy. Um, but this will only take a few minutes. I'm just going to come in here. I'm just going to keep painting here real quick. I'll let this dry up for a little bit and then we can actually start coming in here and laying in some scenery into this trench, uh, or rather the base effect of scenery. Eventually I want to put some weeds and things like that in this and we'll be able to just have all kinds of fun with it. I'll have to order some uh, water and try to put that in this little ditch too because I would definitely like to have just a few little natural little puddles and things like that kind of mixed in here. I'm working down and continuing to work that color out, filling all these little cracks and imperfections in. Since this is acrylic, this will dry super, super fast. While our acrylic paint dries, I'm going to go ahead and come in with some more ballast and I'm going to start doing maybe a little bit of a transitional scene of rock that's kind of spilled out along the concrete here, leading out into some grass. So I have a dark gray blend and I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to kind of bring that rock right up to the edge of the road like that. I'm just going to real carefully blend it in and I'm actually going to go out like this just a little bit to make it look like maybe some of that rocks kind of been dragged out onto the uh, under the driveway there a little bit. I can kind of pull some of that rock out like that a little bit too. Uh, just make it look aged, like it's weathered in a little bit and just kind of fan it out like that. You can see I'm just gonna blend out that a little bit. It'll look nice too because then we'll be able to put in the static grass and the static grass will come in through these weeds. Uh, it'll look like a nice uh, older parking lot, so I think that'll be a really cool effect we'll be able to have a lot of fun with. So I'm just going to continue to work the ballast in around this scene. It's kind of like this. I'm not going to do crazy amount of it, but enough you get the idea. And then what we can do is 
once the surface glue dries up a little bit, then what we can do is actually come in here, lay some fresh glue over this and sprinkle in some sand and maybe some grout a little bit uh, to look like some dirt, maybe some dust, things like that, kind of coming into that lot a little bit. Okay, so I've made some excellent progress out here since that last clip, and unfortunately I didn't get to film some of this because uh, I had probably about uh, maybe 150 or so video clips on my camera is what I was trying to say, and then I had multiple projects on the computer that I had open at the same time, and I really didn't want to have to close them down, so I just kind of kept working, but basically what I've done since the video is I started going in and adding some shrubbery along the tracks. I finished the static grass field here, started adding some details, uh, I started adding some fencing, which we'll talk about. I started working in this parking lot area and started adding some more line side details. Um, I added our uh, antenna pole there and some line side details around the signal bridge area, including an old cut down pole, railroad tie. I've installed all of the switch motors for all the switches. I added this re older relay box here from the older era days on the part of the code line. Uh, finished repairing the ballast, painting the track, added the gas markers, I added of course the signal there, the signal bridge, it took a little bit of time to get in place. Um, over on this end I started working on the fencing along the drainage ditch there and you can see I've really added a lot of that foliage in there and I just started planting some bushes and shrubs in here. Spilling some ballast down that area. You can see the fencing is definitely by no means perfect. Uh, it's just been put in so far and I gotta do final lineup on it. Uh, currently I'm working on making some LED light poles from scratch. I just finished painting these today. I gotta go inside and uh, finish putting them together but they're gonna be like LED style light poles uh, that you see in these modern facilities. So I'm gonna paint these up and then I'll, I'll pretty much put them against the fencing along the structure. The other thing I did with the structure is it's now in place. You can see it, it's not going anywhere. I actually decided instead of trying to glue this thing down, I decided to screw it down. So I actually used uh, two inch screws, as you can see, to actually screw it in and then there's two others. Of course I got to paint all this back here. Once I got all that installed, uh, then I went in and I added some final uh, trim to the edges of the building Then I'm going to paint the concrete color as you can see, just to hide the seam where the structure meets the concrete, I'm going to paint all that a nice concrete color with acrylic and that'll blend all that in. You can see I've added the steps. Uh, other things I've added to the concrete on this side of things, I added the sewer covers or the manhole covers for drainage. You can see those. Uh, those come from Alcom Scale Models, the same company that made this chain link fencing. Okay. So I've also added the chain link fencing to my area over here and this is going to basically be an area with a transformer for the power uh, coming into the facility. This is something you often will see and of course I'll have to figure out where I need poles and everything to come in. I'll have to scratch build those. Um, you can see I've added the, uh, the weeds on the right of way. That's just a combination of static grass tufts and some Woodland Scenics uh, static grass shrubbery that I've installed and you can see it's all running down the edge of the track. I added some signal poles there for the uh, signal bridge, the big ass signal bridge. Um, and then there's some more, but I ran out of shrubs, so I got to get some more shrubs to start accenting uh, the right of way here. I do have some propane tanks on order. They're going to be this style of propane tank, uh, similar to what I used over here. I'm going to be installing two of them over in this corner, and those are going to be for the propane heaters on the switches, of course. Uh, we still got to weather all of these other little parts that we've added. I'm going to get the airbrush out here possibly tomorrow. And I'm going to start painting the fencing. And I'm going to start weathering this parking lot. Uh, I also got to paint the manhole color, uh, covers, not colors, but the covers. Because you can see they're all running along the fencing there. So I got to paint all those. And then tonight I'm going to paint all these styrene strips concrete. I'm going to glue down our cyclone so it'll finally be installed. It'll go over here. And then I've prepared some fencing, which is photo etch. Also by Alcom Scale Miles, I've cut some to size and painted it yellow. And once all this is painted, then I'll just take these pieces of fencing and glue it around the structure. So that'll look really nice. And then come over here, which 
to our scratch built, or not scratch built, but kit built silos. You remember that we've prepared these. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have them somewhere in this position, something like that. Okay. So they'll be down here. Uh, annoying because it'll be kind of blocking some of the area of the right of way, but that's just part of the realism, you know. So I'll have them glued in like this. And then I'm going to set up some pipe rigging that's going to run the transload pipes into the building, into the structure. So that'll look really nice. Uh, but we got a little bit more work to do, but you can see that this entire scene blended in super nice with this existing module, the first one I did. And it was a good thing I took my time building this because now I've been able to rethink some stuff and better plan things and also I've had plenty of time to be able to work on other small details. So now we're just being able to enjoy the fruits of our labor here looking back being able to go in and install a lot of these details. Uh, the fencing in particular just made everything really pop here. I really like that. Alright, I just painted the sewers. I did a weathering wash around them to make them look a little bit grimy. Like maybe some puddles of water have sat around them for a little while. Especially on this one, so that was pretty good. Um, I finished trimming the building, painting that in, to blend it in a little bit. So you can see all that there. Uh, I'm going to use some masking tape. Oh, sorry. I'm going to use some tape masking to actually cover the seam up and paint it in, and that'll hide that. And then over here, I've actually permanently installed the dust cyclone. I've added the uh, walkway there at the top, and then I've added the photo etched walkway all the way around the tank. So that's been blended in real nicely. Some weathering and everything like that will uh, really bring that to life. But the industry is finally installed on the layout after, what has it been, almost three months? Uh, well, it was a lot of work, but you know, once you push through it and get through all that work, you end up with something like this. And now I'm just super satisfied. I'm, I'm really proud of the way it came out. And this scene has just absolutely come to life. I mean, I'm just super happy with how it is. Uh, but it's only going to get better because now we can just keep adding the scenery to it and just really keep detailing this whole area. Now out here I've been absolutely enjoying using these custom made mini grounds shrubs. Uh, these are little static grafts tufts. Uh, he makes these in all kinds of different colors for all kinds of scenes. I have a darker two-tone green shade here. I have a uh, marsh green color that would be good for our little drainage ditch area. I have forest green, three packs of forest green. This is the most common color. This matches pretty well with the, uh, the static grass I'm using on the layout. So I just use these guys to put little weeds all over the place. So let me go ahead and give you guys a demonstration of how I use these tufts, how they can be applied to a scene like this. What you do is you just pretty much take them right off paper like that and you can just transfer them right to your layout and they're self-adhesive so you don't really need to glue these down they stick right in place and you can see you can just very quickly start adding in these little shrubs all on the right of way here But this is very common on the sides of railroad tracks. You'll see these little weed patches, they'll generally form around the edges of the roadbed. Maybe where there's a little bit more drainage. So you can just come in here and you can add all kinds of little shrubs along the right of way like this. And it just brings so much life into these scenes, I'll tell you what. I learned to use these at a younger age when I was building little display modules to run my models on. And it's just been fantastic out here on the layout using these. It's such a huge time saver as well. You can do this with static grass on your own as well. You cut it to size and things like that, but this is just a huge time saver. And these things are relatively affordable. You know, they're only a couple bucks a pack, which is fantastic. You can see you get quite a few where you can fill in quite a large area like this relatively quickly. So in terms of weathering out here, what I'm gonna be doing is using some AIM products powders. I'm going to be using a brush to just come in here. I'm going to add just little highlights of grime. Little bits of shading just around things like those silos that we have laid out on our concrete. 
Uh, you can do this with an airbrush too. A lot of guys are really good with airbrushes doing this kind of blend weathering. Um, just for these smaller areas, I do find that the brush is a little bit more easy to work with. Uh, I just like to come out here and I can just kind of spot weather things where I want little bits of grime to be. Oftentimes you'll see this bit of runoff from tanks like this. You even see it kind of brushed up like that a little bit. You can see I did model some very light streaking down the sides of these things, but I tried to keep them relatively clean. The other area that's going to get really dirty is going to be the area around this dust cyclone, around this fence. Let's go ahead and brush in some powder. What we're going to do is actually take in some of this powder like that, and why don't we just spill some in? What the heck, right? Just have some fun with this. Make it look like maybe there's just some little areas of grime that kind of come in here and spill all over the place. For this, we can actually switch to a larger brush, which I use for powders, mostly powders. I can just come in here. Work some of this powder in and just kind of roughly blend it out, but I'll bring it right up to that fencing. Carefully, I'm not trying to you know, damage any of these fine details, but you can just kind of come in here and work some of these splotches into the scene like this. Just make this whole area, you know, just make it look really dirty. Blend it out a little bit. Just kind of scrubbing that brush for a little. You know, and if you don't like this, you can always just kind of sand it out or add some more layers of weathering over it. There's really no right or wrong way to do this, but you can see I'm just going to kind of blend this whole area together a little bit. You can see we made a little bit of a mess there, but that's all right. That's really what you want is that randomness with the weathering, because that's what you see in real life. Just remember that. Just make sure to get some in between our tank here. Just brush it in. A little bit of spillage, you know. Oh, no, I broke my pipe off. That's okay. I can repair that later. It's all good. Don't worry about it. If you can always go back and fix some stuff. I'm just going to, again, find some of this powder work just around that fencing a little bit. Just like that. See, it's starting to make the area look a little bit more worn in, which I like. That's what I want. Same thing with the supports over here. I can just kind of work some of that powder in. Make it look like some rust is coming off that little metal platform there. 